over Neisseria. Uh, these are gram-negative bacteria. So you already had an introduction to the gram-negative bacteria, the bacilli by Dr. Uh, Casimero. So this one covers the gram-negative bacteria, cocci, bacilli, cocobacilli, etc. So it covers Neisseria, bacterial, uh, the etiologic agent of bacterial vaginosis, the Haemophilus group, Bordetella, and then Legionella group. Okay, so they start gram negative bacteria. So, just an introduction. Okay, so uh, an overview of the gram negative bacteria. So, there are di diplococci, they come as cocobacilli. So, cocobacilli, as I said in the first lectures, it's and the size is in between a cocci, bigger than a cocci, but smaller than a bacilli, okay? So cocci are rod-shaped, bacilli, uh, sorry, spherical, bacilli are rod-shaped. So a cocobacilli is an in-between, these two. So when you make some drawings, make sure na, yun. Dilik ang cocobacilli, mas dagkupan yung bacilli, okay? Ang, co ang coxai dagko, magan hulin nga ano. So, I think I'm very particular with uh, ito nga mga koan. Siring pa, when you make your drawing, make it representative. At least you, you understand what you're drawing. Just for the heck of drawing, hala nagpinan, drawing hin kadadamo nga mga hulin. Okay? So, these are the gram negative, no? Okay, sorry. So, so under the diplococci, uh, we have genus Neisseria, which we'll be taking up this morning. And then uh, we have two important species that affects human, I mean, gonorrhea and meningitis. Sorry, excuse me. Now. Then... For cocobacilli, we will be taking up. Uh, okay, uh, the Haemophilus influence, the Haemophilus group. Okay, Bordetella, which will be we will be taking up also this morning, and then uh, Pastorella, Brucella, and Francisella next Wednesday, November ten. Okay. Then I think what you have with Dr. Simero is the lecture on the gram neg bacilli. So that what is important here is uh, the differentiate. It's differentiated into two groups, whether they are lactose or non-lactose fermenter. So then lactose fermenting group are your E. coli, uh, Klebsiella enterobacter, E.K.E. E Escherichia coli, Klebsiella enterobacter, and then uh, Cetrobacter and Seraphia. Okay, so slow lactose fermenter and Seraphia and uh, Cetrobacter fast lactose fermenter, your E. coli. You know. And then uh, the non lactose fermenter are your the pathogens in the group, Pseudomonas. Shigella, Yersinia, Salmonella, and Prutus. Okay, then you can further subdivide them into whether they are oxidase positive or negative. So in the non NLF or non lactose fermenting group, uh, to differentiate the rest, Pseudomonas from the rest, it's the oxidase test. Pseudomonas give, will give a positive oxidase. And then to differentiate Shigella from Salmonella, is by the, the production of hydrogen sulfide. I think you have this with Dr. Casimero. For this, are the, the, the important thing about to remember, because it's hard to to memorize the uh, to mga biochemical reaction, sugar reaction. This are in general and specific uh, differentiating points between these two big groups, and then. Uh, Another gram negative are the coma shape uh, organism. These are your Campylobacter, Helicobacter, and the Bebrio. 
So just like your pseudomonas, they're oxidase positive. So a differentiating characteristic is uh, Campylobacter grows in for, at 42 degrees, while uh, Vibrio in an alkaline media and uh, H. pylori produces urease, which is an enzyme. Okay? So, yun. Uh, and uh, itong lactose fermenter and non-lactose, you can plate that into a, a maconky agar. We discuss it on a drop the simmer with you, diba? So, on a maconky non-lactose fermenter and on color and colonies, while the lactose fermenter will give us a definite color also on the colonies. So, that important. Okay, so next slide. Uh, same, same, right here. So it's a gram negative al al algorithm. So, oxidase oxid positive curb organism, one that grows at 42, Campylobacter, and then grows in alkaline by Brio. That was uncooked, and gram negative in meningitis, gonorrhea, or axella cataralis. Then the cocobacillary form or Cocoid, it's influenza, pertussis, pastorella, brusella, and then the red shape, yun, lactose or non lactose. Pero parulan and usa, ano. So, and usa may dela, ano. The previous slide, may, may ano la siya. May mga drawing, drawing. Okay. Then, uh, you can differentiate meningitis from gonorrhea by the sugar fermentation, lactose. Uh, non lactose fermenter and gonorrhea, it only ferments glucose, while uh, your meningitis will ferment maltose and glucose. Okay, then for the rads, ito. okay, now for So, next slide. Gonorrhea, uh -huh. Okay, so the first group are the Neisseria. It's a large group of Bacteria that colonizes the mucosal surfaces of many animals. So there are 11 species of Neisseria that colonizes human, but only two are pathogenic to, I mean, can cause disease, no? are pathogens. And that's Neisseria meningitidis and gonorrhea. Mm -hmm. Take note of the 11 species, only two. So not much to remember. So what are the general characteristics of Neisseria? The, this group of organisms are aerobic and uh, they are cocci in forms and they are arranged in pairs. So an example of diplococci, the usual, the usual example for a diplococci that we will show you in the lab. So a slide of Neisseria gonorrhea or meningitis. Okay? With adjacent sides flattened like a coffee bean. Uh, coffee. Coffee beans. Okay. And they are oxidase positive. So anatom oxidase positive, pseudomonas, and then uh, the coma shape, uh, oxidase positive. And most are catalyst positive. So catalyst positive, where did you encounter a catalyst positive organism and to differentiate stuff from strep? The mastapylococci are catalyst positive, while streptococci are catalyst negative. So add, 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 add it to your list, another catalyst positive group are the Neisseria. Then they are non-motile, that means it does not have a flagella. Then uh, acid uh, oxidation of carbohydrates, but not from fermentation so it's oxidation aerobic okay. Uh, okay so a nar narrative in it, but in general the Neisseria are gram negative occur in pairs so that's they are the diplo uh Neisseria gonorrhea or often referred to as gonococci and Neisseria meningitis or the meningococci are pathogenic for humans and typically are found in associated or with or with or inside a polymorphonuclear cells. Okay. Then some Neisseria are normal inhabitants of the human respiratory tract, rarely if ever cause disease and occur extracellularly. So the pathogenic ones are 
found inside or intracellular in a polymorphonuclear leukocytes like your neutrophils, while the non-pathogenic ones are extracellular in location and, and they are part of the normal and in flora of the respiratory, upper respiratory tract. Then gonococci and meningococci are cross, closely related. Uh, they have 70% homology and are differentiated by laboratory tests. Like the example I gave is the utilization of maltose. Yeah. Then uh, meningococci have polysaccharide capsule, but gonococci does not. Okay. And then meningococci rarely have a plasmid, but most gonococci do. Okay. So most importantly, the two species are differentiated by the usual clinical presentation of the disease. Uh, meningococci are typically found in the upper respiratory tract and it can cause meningitis. That's why the name meningo. And uh, gonococci are the agent of infections in the uh, reproductive tract. It can cause genital infections or uh, in in the local dialect, in the Bisaya, we call it uh, uh, Tulu, Tulu. Okay, so morphology, morphology and identification. So a typical organism is uh, they are gram negative. So I hope by now you know what gram staining is, what is responsible for an organism to be gram positive or gram negative. Those are basic, you should know. Okay, magbalik -balik ito. Non motile, so no flagella, they are arranged in pairs and they are small, 0.8 micrometer in diameter. And the individual cocci are kidney bean shaped and they appear in, uh, in come in pairs. So in culture, in 48 hours on an enriched media, they form a convex glistening elevated mucoid colonies, which is about one to five millimeter in diameter. And uh, they are transparent or opaque. They are non-pigmented. They are non-hemolytic. Those are the cultural characteristics of the Neisseria. Growth characteristic, they, they grow best under aerobic but some grow in an anaerobic environment. They have complex growth requirement. Uh, most Neisseria oxidizes carbohydrate producing acid, but no gas. <laughs> then they have a positive oxidase reaction. So no gas. So in your previous lecture with Dr. Simero, I think you, you learned, uh, I mean, now discuss new how to detect if there is gas production in the media in the in the tube if you see some crack in your in the tube media uh, in a solid media or bubbles con liquid so it's an indica indication of gas production okay. meningococci and gonococci they grow based on a media that contains a complex organic substance such, such as heated blood Hemen and an animal protein in an atmosphere containing 5% CO2. <laughs> Before we used to do exercises, uh, this exercise in the lab, but na delete na ini kay very tedious and ano. So, wala na. So, we just show you a slide of a diprococci. You know. Then growth is inhibited by some toxic constituent in the medium. It, is, uh, it requires a special medium. Later on, we will discuss that. And then it's the organism are rapidly killed by drying, sunlight, moist heat, and many disinfectants. Okay, so the first <laughs> organism in the group is Neisseria gonorrhea. So look at the organism, it's uh, round, spherical, but flat on one end, resembling a kidney bean. And these projections, these are not flagella, but they are pembrae or pili. Okay, so gram-negative kidney bean diplococci, 
if the arrow is clear at your end, this black arrow is pointing to an intracellular group of diplococci. And uh, the organism is transmitted by sexual contact or during uh, passage through a, an infected birth canal. So what, what makes it a pathogen? It has a pili. Then it has this lipo oligosaccharide that's in the cell wall. IgA, it has IgA protease. It's an enzyme that will uh, break down your IgA. That's uh, the that's the predominant uh, immunoglobulin in the mucous membrane. It's uh, people who are C deficient in complement six C six to C nine are predisposed to. Uh, infection with Neisseria gonorrhea. And then uh, since it causes uh, uh, gonorrhea and other reproductive tract infection, usually when you have gonorrhea, <coughs> that's the disease, uh, there is a usual co-infection with chlamydia trachomatis. So pathogenesis of Neisseria, uh, the fimbriated cells attach to intact mucous membrane epithelium in the reproductive tract. It has capacity to invade intact mucous membrane or skin with abrasion. And then it adheres to the mucosal epithelium, penetrates and multiply even before passing through the mucosal epithelial cells. It establishes infection in the sub-epithelial layer. So in the most common site of inoculation, so in the female, it's in the cervix causing cervicitis or in the vagina of the female, while in the male, it's in the urethra causing urethritis or in the penis of the male. So it's, it's really a, a sexually transmitted disease. Okay, so this is a picture just to show you this is a a neutrophil, uh, this is, these are the, the, the nucleus of the neutrophil. And uh, the one that with, with the arrow is uh, the diplococci, Neisseria. So these are the extracellular, you can see this one, diplococci. Mm -hmm. In the lab, this is what we have, this extracellular bin, coffee bean ship, uh, or Coxide that come in pairs. Okay, so uh, culturing Nigeria, we we need a special media. A Thayer Martin, they call that media is uh, Thayer Martin. So it's a chocolate agar that has been modified to be selective for Nigeria and gonorrhea and meningitis. So what makes it a selective media? is the addition of BCN inhibitor. So what are these BCN? B stands for vancomycin, which is uh, needed to inhibit most gram-positive bacteria. And C is for cholestine. It inhibits gram-negative bacteria other than Neisseria. And the N is nestatin or anisomycin, which will inhibit the growth of yeast uh, cells or yeast organisms. So aside from the usual Thayer Martin, you can also modify uh, the Thayer Martin. So you have a modified Thayer Martin agar. Aside from the BCN that is incorporated into the media, you add trimetoprin to, to inhibit Proteus, okay? Because Proteus is also a common cause of urinary tract infection. So you want to inhibit the growth of Proteus because you want to grow the Neisseria, okay? So what are the diseases caused by Neisseria? So the main disease is gonorrhea. It's a sexually transmitted disease. So in the dialect, we call it tulu. Uh, in men, it can cause an acute urethritis, prostate uh, infection of the prostate, bladder and epididymite, epididymis, okay, epididymitis. In women, cervicitis is most common and can go up and infect the endometrium. So you will have endometritis and 
self in or in short uh, PID pelvic inflammatory disease. Okay. Then in the newborn, as the, the newborn is delivered uh, per uh, normally through the vagina, as it passes through an infected birth canal, the baby can have neonatal conjunctivitis. And uh, this has been uh, addressed at by giving uh, eye prophylaxis to the newborn uh, before we give silver nitrate. But, but nowadays, uh, erythromycin treatment. Then it can also cause vaginitis and it can also cause oral infection. So how did this STD cause an oral infection? So you just spread, stretch your imagination. Okay, so this is how it looks. This is a urethral discharge. Look at the purulent urethral discharge from the tip of the, this is the penis. And this is from the cervix. Okay. That's the discharge, and this is the, the anionate with the uh, purulent you know, conjunctival discharge, neonatal conjunctivitis. So, okay, just laboratory you know, characterization. These are small gram negative diplo, uh, microscopic visible within neutrophils, so they are intracellular with purulent urethral exudate. So you get your specimen from a purulent urethral exudates and look for, do a gram a smear and gram stain, okay? The common site of infection caused by gonorrhea include the endocervix, the urethra, the rectum, the pharynx, and the conjunct and, and conjunctivitis depend on the sexual practice of infected person. Susceptible to drying and cooling, so immediate culture of specimen into a pre-warm selective mod or modified tear Martin or a Martin Lewis agar. And uh, non-selective media chocolate agar with moist atmosphere containing 5% CO2. They are oxidase positive and uh, they grow on a Thayer Martin. So it utilizes glucose, but not maltose. So this is one uh, character, characteristic that will differentiate gonorrhea from meningitis. So it can only utilize glucose, but not maltose, whereas meningitis can do both. Okay. Uh, still part of the... So for men, you do a urethral swab, and that's usually the specimen of choice. Uh, or first void urine can also be used as an alternative for doing an NAA test. What is an NAA test? The general. Are you Anna? What's an NAA test? Good morning, Doc. Yes. What is um, what is? I am not familiar. You did not. Uh, you know, I will volunteer. Miss, I know, Miss Kuritana. You not meet the guy. Okay, NA test for the magihana la. But nucleic acid amplification test. Okay. Then in women, pelvic exam. Speak, uh, you do a speck, uh, use a speculum to expose the cervix, and uh, you get an endocervical sample for testing for gonococcal. Okay, so next treatment. Uh, so, uh, the recent uh, you uh, med medication is sauna before you no. Know, Penicillin, penicillin, then nagkamay uh, ada resistance to penicillin. So, so yung pang panahon ng gira, penicillin lang to. Now, uh, we're using ceftriaxone and doxycycline is added to the regimen due to a frequent co-infection with chlamydia. Okay. So, for prevention, yun, safe sex. So, you use condom. 
then uh, the sexual partner has also to be treated. And then for the baby born to a uh, mother with a and gonorrhea infection of the uh, cervix, uh, erythromycin ointment or silver nitrate to prevent conjunctivitis. So nowadays we're using erythro instead of the silver nitrate. I have problem with this laptop. is that not old but I don't, know. I don't know somebody tell me what to do I don't know okay the next group are of Nigeria is I know meningitis the etiologic agent of meningococcemia okay. again they are diplococci, intracellular in location. Those the pathogenic Neisseria intracellular. Those that are found extracellularly are non-pathogens and they are usually part of the normal flora. So this is a, a, a picture of the brain showing patchy hemorrhages on the, in the surface of the brain. <laughs> so the habitat of the organism is in the upper respiratory tract and humans are the only natural host of meningococci and uh, pathogenesis uh, they have they are capsulated and we all know that the purpose or the function of the capsule is an antiphagocytic it's a defense mechanism of the organism so organism that are capsulated are pathogenic because they evade the natural uh, defenses of the host so antivagocytic a polysaccharide capsule. Then they produce an endotoxin from the lipopolysaccharide. And then they have this enzyme, the IgA protease, and persons are deficient in C6 or C9 are predisposed to uh, menin meningococcemia or meningitis. So an overview, they are encapsulated small gram-negative diplococci transmitted by a respiratory droplet uh, and it's the pili that uh, that is the structure right? uh, just like the parang flagella but they are very short shorter than the flagella and the function is not for movement but it is for attachment so the pili allows the organism to attach to the nasopharyngeal mucosa and it's most common in winter and early spring and uh, favored by close individual contact, such as in schools, in institution, or in military barracks. So this is a sample of a Neisseria taken from a, a cerebrospinal fluid. So this one is a neutrophil. This is the. These are the you know, nucleus, nuclear structure of the neutrophil, and. Uh, these things here, let me move in ito. the diplococci, a lot inside the neutrophil. So another another slide show, which shows also, you know, but I don't know if it's clear at your end, intracellularly located diplococci, Madame Matera. Hi, Jesus. Okay, so in meningococcemia, the the skin lesions are prominent. So you will have pipikia, that that small and uh, hemorrhagic uh, lesion on the skin that will later merge into become a big you know, bully. Uh, hemorrhagic bully and then uh, it is shown on the skin there was an outbreak of meningocoxemia because it's a fatal disease so if somebody in the community has 
or turns out to be positive for in meningitis. So the whole family has to be treated prophylactically. And also, parang, parang COVID, uh, isolate mo. So it's a most, uh, meningitis, uh, in meningitis is the most common cause of meningitis among children aged two, 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 two years old to 18, two to 18. <laughs> Later, we will learn that another organism from six months to two years, to five years, on hemophilus liwat. So it's manifested as fever, headaches, stiff neck, increased levels of polymorphonuclear in the cerebrospinal fluid. That is, and another is meningococcemia. It's a more severe form of the, than meningitis. It is a, the dissemination of meningococci into the bloodstream. Coxemia in meninges confined to the meninges of the brain. So this will lead to a multiple organ disease, consumptive coagulopathy, PTK or purpura crash or purpura fulminance. <laughs> the one that uh, I show you in the, the in this one, in the mga purpuric spots on the skin. And uh, the last clinical syndrome is the Waterhouse Friderichin syndrome. That's the most severe form of meningococcemia. So patient will have high fever, shock, widespread purpura, the IC or disseminated intravascular coagulation, and then thrombocytopenia, adrenal insufficiency. So it, because of the bilateral destruction of the adrenal glands. Okay, treatment, um, penicillin, this is to respond to penicillin, PENG, but now most doctors will give a ceftriaxone, the newer medication. Okay, so laboratory characteristic, more or less same with gonorrhea. Uh, but this one, they are encapsulated, uh, small gram negative, encapsulated cocci, diplococci, often inside of or in association with a polymorphinuclear leukocyte, which are observed microscopically in the CSF. They can be cultured on chocolate agar with enhanced growth on moist atmosphere with 5% CO2. They are oxidase positive, acid production from glucose and maltose, but not from other sugar. So to differentiate, diba, and gonorrhea will only produce acid, acid production from glucose, but not maltose. So it uh, Neisseria meningitis produces acid from oxidation of glucose and maltose. So this one is glucose, this is maltose, and one is sucrose. So in the previous slide, we said it only from glucose and maltose, but not from other sugar, no, not sucrose. So the acid turns the pH indicator. So the indicator in this medium is phenol red. And then it, if acid, you know, it... Uh, it is oxidized, if the acid is produced from by meningitis, it will turn the indicator, which is red, into a yellow. So the yellow tube are positive, okay? So this must be in meningitis, and this one is in gonorrhea. It only uh, produces acid from glucose, but not from maltose and sucrose. So the, that, that's one way of differentiating meningitis from gonorrhea. Okay, so how to prevent vaccine containing capsular polysaccharide to strains ACY and W. That's one, three, five, coupled to a carrier protein to enhance immunogenicity. Then uh, rifampin is used as a chemoprophylaxis to close contact with the person who is who turns out to be positive for in meningitis. I remember mga siguro di la 10 years ago, nagkamay ada di dahan. Kung dito may San Jose, somebody had 
positive. There's not positive for meningo, but in my nursing to students who were doing some community work, they were given repumpin as chemoprophylaxis. One of my son at the time was a nursing student. So he was taking repumpin as a prophylaxis. Hatagan City Health. So the other Nigeria, uh, we have Ikenella Corrodens in Opotoleto, it's in the book. And then this one came out, one question came out in the last board exam mayon, about Ikenella and then in uh, Kenjela Kenji. Uh, these two organisms uh, belong to the Nigeria family because uh, uh, culture negative subacute bacterial endocarditis in patient with pre-existing heart disease. So uh, my condition, uh, pre-existing heart disease. Okay, Ikenella corrodens and Kinjela Kinji. And they form part of the HASEC group. HASEC group is a group of organism causing, you know, indicated in causing subacute bacterial endocarditis in patients with pre-existing heart disease. Uh, so what H stands for hemophilus, apropilus, hemophilus, apropilus, uh, now, at this time, man, in hemophilus, apropilus, uh, agrega, pibacter, apropilus. Then, actinobacillus and A, actinobacillus, actinomycin comitans, and C for cardiobacterium hominis. E is Ikenella, and K for Kenjela, Kenji. <laughs> so, again, appeal ko lang ni kay ISO a previous question may hasik naghasik ng lagim okay so that ends the Nigeria Nigeria gonorrhea and meningitis and then Ikenella and Kenjela so the next group is on the agent causing bacterial vaginosis okay. so bacterial vaginosis is uh, is an infection of the the vagina, the female reproductive, low reproductive tract. So you have a normal healthy vagina. So we all know that the vagina is not sterile. No, it's, uh, it has a halo-halo a microorganism and the predominant one are the lactobacillus. Okay? But Gardnerella is also part of the you know, bacterial flora, but when condition for, you know, it leads to certain condition can cause an overgrowth of your Gardnerella, so it can cause a, a, a condition known as bacterial vaginosis. So if you took uh, a, a closely look closely at the, the illustration, this one is a clean. This is the rugae or the uh, vaginal mucosa, and look at the, uh, this one. It has uh, like a dripping dripping secretions. And then, wala na ang mga black to basilus waray na. So, like overgrow an ibang organism. So, usually, when you talk of bacterial vaginosis, this one also came out in the board. Ito, gin-review nga ni na ako na, ang i-answer na sila kung ano ba ini nga ko ano. A case, may case na and the yeah, option did to uh, the, the patient must be having bacterial vaginosis, Gardnerella vaginalis infection. But I said, "Ko big man in a question. Okay, the student can answer bacterial vaginosis. Okay, bacterial vaginosis is a condition that encompasses all of this. No, it's not only Gardnerella vaginalis that can cause vaginal bacterial vaginosis, but uh, this is the most umaga pinaka Pinaka common is it's this one is found in the vaginal flora of women with bacterial vaginitis as well as in healthy women. So just like your lactobacillus there. And so while other organisms, uh, anaerobic bacteria such as mobilincus and Prebotella, 
can also cause bacterial vaginosis. Okay? But the, the most common one is when we talk of bacterial vaginosis, parang kikokorelate na ito to Gardnerella vaginalis. Okay. So, causative agent of vaginosis, uh, it may be caused by a multiple anaerobic bacteria. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, the common one, as I said, is Gardnerella. And uh, a change in the vaginal flora, uh, increase in pH will allow the overgrowth of the pathogens. Okay. So these are the organisms associated with bacterial vaginosis. Your lactobacillus species, which are normal flora, so they can also um, a decrease in this one can lead to overgrowth of the others. So you can have bacterial vaginosis. The mobilinco species, Gardnerella vaginalis, Mycoplasma hominis, Prebotella, Peptostreptococcus, Porphyromonas, and Atopobium vaginae, and other polymicrobial. Kumbaga, it's a parang halo halo sa choking. Hmm. A lot, no? But uh, in the more exam question, they, they zoom in into this one. So, because, so if, if you, if the examiner, you want to, ano, ini, dire ka na magpinan mutang hit iba pa kay, because the rest can also cause, ano, or masing ka the most common. Uh, okay. So, Clinical significance of this organism, Gardnerella, it's a normal part of the normal flora that can cause vaginosis. Okay. Again, I said the vaginosis is polymicrobic, including mobilincus and uh, bacteroides. Bacteroides is an, an anaerobic bacteria. So how to make a diagnosis? You will have a gray, uh, homogeneous gray discharge coming from the vagina. Then the presence of clue cells, in, uh, the discharges and um, amine or fishy odor. And then, uh, so a culture is not necessary to make a diagnosis. So just look at the discharge. If it's uh, grayish in color and then it has a characteristic, barang malang saman is the odor. And then, Look at the epithelial, some, do some uh, swab uh, of the epithelial cells, vaginal epithelial cells, and you, you will find a lot of clue cells. So what are these clue cells? So, uh, the, these are the normal epithelial cells in the vagina seen under a microscope. So what happens when you have bacterial vaginosis, uh, bacteria will stick to the epithelial cells. So you look at this. So that's why they are known as clue, clue cells. Vaginal cells with bacteria stacking to them. Okay. Another clue cells. Vaginal epithelial cells studied with adherent cocobacilli. So they are best seen at the edge of the cell. And 20% of epithelial cells should be clue cells. So it's the single most reliable predictor of but, but bacterial vaginosis, the presence of clue cells. So we're done with bacterial vaginosis. Now we'll go to the hemophilus. So under this, uh, uh, hemophilus, although the, the lecture will... Um, which, which one? November. So as I said earlier, anyway, since I'm the one doing both these two lectures, this is according to what I have in my ano. Okay, ano, dun sa, sa Southwestern, what we do is, or is a system 
organ system approach. So, kung respiratory yan na, ang lecture tanan from medicine to micro to paso to whatever, puro respi. So, yun. So, what I am in here. Topic, so hindi ko na lagin change. So, gram negative brands of the respiratory tract includes hemophilus, which is part of the lecture topic, Bordetella, and Lichunila. So, I stick to that one na lang. Hemophilus influenza type B. So, the most in this group, ang pinaka importante are this the hemophilus. Bordetella and Dichunilla. So under Hemophilus, there are other species, of course. Since the top of the slide was on respiratory tract infection, although later I add certain slides to include the other Hemophilus. So it's the type B, Hemophilus influenza, which is the most pathogenic in the group. There are six types, A to F, and Hemophilus. Then, they can be cultured in, in, into an enriched chocolate agar. And uh, it has a polyribitol ribose phosphate capsule, capsulated in it. Then Bordetella pertussis, uh, Bordet gingo agar. And it's the ideologic agent of whooping cough. Then another Organism causing respiratory tract infection is Legionella pneumophila. It is uh, it, it stains poorly with the gram staining procedure. So you do a silver stain, and they can be grown in a charcoal yeast agar, and it has been associated with air conditioning unit. So I'm with mga key. Uh, key points in remembering this organism. So hemophilus as a capsule, uh, polyribital ribos, ribos, phosphate capsule, bordetella, whooping cough, bordet gingo, and then lichunila neophila. Okay, so we'll take up the hemophilus first. These are small gram-negative cocobacillary rods, and this has a a growth requirement, no? So it requires an X and a V factor. What's an X factor? The X factor is hemen from the blood. So you plate it on a blood agar. And the V is uh, NAD, nicotinamide, adenine, di, the nucleotide, the thing, yan na. Kalimut na ako. Basta NAD. So ka-abribit, ka-abribit. I sometimes forget na di. <laughs> Uh, you look it up um, for growth. So you need you, you need this too. Mm -hmm. Later on, based on this growth requirement, we can differentiate the different species of hemophilus. And then it exhibits this when you plate it on the you know, the blood agar, exhibits a satellite phenomena around its aureus colonies. So, so if this is a blood agar, you you swab it with an S aureus, and then you, you know, then around the S aureus colonies, your hemophilus influenza will exhibit satellite phenomena. I have a, a we have later on we have a better uh, no, much better pic picture of satellitism. Okay, so. So on a chocolate agar, flat grayish brown colonies after a 24-hour incubation. And but this one does not grow on sheep agar except around colonies of Staphylococcus, uh, Staphylococci, producing satellite. So this one is the uh, this is the strip of Staphylococcus aureus. These are the colonies growing around with satellite. So satellite phenomena, you know, Always equate that with hemophilus influenza. So habitat, where do you find the organisms? So most of them are part of the normal microbiota, micro normal my, ano, normal flora of the upper respiratory tract. Yeah, nag lecture na kamo ano, normal flora. Ano to? Miss Miss Kain. Huh? Who did the lecture on the normal flora? 
I think, uh, are you around, present, Ms. Kain? Yes, brother. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like you like lecture, not normal flora. You remember? Lecture ito ni Cosimero. Uh, this is one important topic also because uh, uh, because uh, microorganisms are everywhere. Sering pangkuan, parang ano, it's om omnipresent, bisha in my da. So, you should know that what is normal and what is abnormal, like on the skin, uh, we can get infected with Staphylococcus aureus, with epidermidis, but the, the, these are normal flora, part of the normal flora of the skin. Okay. So how is it transmitted? By a respiratory droplet. Okay, and you will lose. So the type B, H influenza type B. So you will notice uh, it on vaccine yana, heb B, heb, hemophilus influenza vaccine B, because it's the type B, polyribitol ribose phosphate mm -hmm. capsule. Uh, it's the major virulence factor, the capsular antigen of hemophilus influenza type B. 95% uh, of invasive disease is due to type B. So they are non-toxigenic. That means it does not elaborate a toxin, but they are IgA protease positive. Then it affects children six months to a year. So this is the most common cause of uh, meningitis in children six months to uh, one year. So it's some textbook na two years. But nowadays you see less and less of meningitis secondary to, to, to hemophilus influenza because of the vaccine. And then I let the map of vaccine libre ito. Before, uh, before when the government had this, and what, oh no, before the government had the, the heavy vaccine, you go to a private pediatrician, mahal yun, tag two, two, five, adan to. But now, adan na letot mga, ano, uh, patient education, yung mga mother ha, community to, to urge them, explain to them the value of uh, having vaccination. Okay, it can cause sinusitis, otitis media, pneumonia. These are the less serious form of the disease. But the most serious is a meningitis. As I said earlier, uh, no, uh, six months to, to one to two years old, the most common cause of meningitis before. Why six months? Why not at birth? Mm -hmm. That could be the reason. Mm -hmm. Because at birth, the baby still has maternal anti- Ako nala, ako Akun question, akun answer. Okay, para madali. So you just, you listen. Okay, this will be part of the quiz next month, next time. Next, next quiz. Okay. And uh, it's influenza type B is the most common cause of cherry red epiglottitis, in, in, uh, usually in, in patients, in, in children, you, they will have this, if you look at the, the throat, you know, very you know, cherry red, usually the, the, the etiologic agent of that is H. influenzae. Then it can also cause exacerbation of COPD among adult patients. It can, aside from that, it can cause uh, cellulitis and septic arthritis okay so what is nthi okay i'll give the meaning non-typable hemophilus influenza uh okay we said type b diba my type b a b c d e f na hemophilus influenza okay uh, and the most uh, pathogenic is the type b so aside from that may da mga non-typable for a type they are neither A, B, C, D, or E, or F. Uh, so they are less pathogenic. Or, and uh, sometimes they can cause this one, otitis, sinusitis. Okay. 
So the drug of choice is ciftriaxon, a third generation generations part of the third generation of cephalosporins. Okay. Then for prevention, we have the hip vaccine type containing type B capsular polysaccharide conjugated to a diphtheria toxoid given between two months and 18 months. Okay, so aside from, okay. Aside from, if it's influenza, say we have other species like Hemophilus egyptius, which is the etiologic agent of conjunctivitis or pink eye, or in Bisaya, another sore eyes, Piscat, other in Bisaya, it's sore eyes, English. Uh, Piscat. Uh, uh, it was used to be known as the Coxwix bacillus. Okay, so Coxwix hemophilus egyptius. I was talking dum duman when I was, you know, even. So, Janti Paku, Cooksweek, Egyptians. Then, Hemophilus Docrie, it's an, it's cause, it can cause STD. Siguri, they discuss and again by the, by the lecturer who will do, be doing the STD module. So, it can cause chancreoid or the soft chancre. While the hard, hard chancre is due to Treponema pallidum. Mm -hmm. If there is a soft, my degree to the hard. So the hard chunker is due to treponema pallidum. The soft chunker is due to hemophilus docrie. This is an STD. Ano niya CDC? Ah, the CDC or the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta recommends azithromycin, giving a gram of Azithromycin. Aside from azithromycin, the iba itong mga mga gamot. Anyway, this will be discussed by the one who will be doing the STD. Okay. And again, adi na hi hasik, na hasik na lagim. Part of the hasik group is aggregative bacter aprophilos. This used to be known as hemophilos aprophilos, di ba? Ang mga nga H. Pero yan na naging one na hiya. Aggregative Aggregative bacter, aprophilus. Bisang pala, ano, ngarap pala yung bacteria, tang twister na. Okay. So, what is this part of the hemophilus group? It can cause infective endocarditis, although it's part of the normal flora of the oral cavity as well as the upper respiratory tract. Mm -hmm. So, ini, I hope, is this clear at your end? Ito. Kung di re-clear, you open your book. Ano yun eh? Page 276 of the Kaparabanya edition. Okay, 275, that's the beginning of the chapter. You flip that page. Ano yun eh? Characteristic and growth requirement of Hemophilus and Aggregative Bacter species important to humans. So we have Hemophilus Influenzae and Hemophilus Egyptius. Okay, so these are the requirements for growth, the X factor and the B factor. Okay, the X factor is the HEM and the B factor is nicotinamide. So influenza requires both X and B as well as Egyptians, but it does not cause hemolysis on the blood agar. Okay, then para influenza does not require the X factor but requires a B factor and it is non-hemolytic also. Then docrie requires the X factor but not the B factor. And then it is non-hemolytic also. While hemophilus hemolyticus uh, requires both. Parihahan ano, influence. But the difference is this one is hemolytic. Well, influence is not. Then para hemolyticos, para pareho latihan para influence, but again, it is hemolytic and para influence is non-hemolytic. Then the aggregate bacter is uh, negative, does not require X, so may, may or may not require the V factor and it's non-hemolytic. Well, 
agreg agregatibacter signis inala ini ni pag inanong doma negative does not require x but requires ano parang para parihat para influence mm -hmm. so what's important in the group is emophilus influence then to differentiate that based on from the other from the rest of the hemophilus based on their requirement for the x and the b factor and then the hemolysis okay the next organism are group or bordetella bordetella pertussis the whooping cough so, so again it's a gram negative uh, encapsulated cocobacillus uh, the agent of pertussis or whooping cough so they are motile and expresses a flagellum like structure so they are part of the uh, uh, present in the upper respiratory tract and they are transmitted by a respiratory droplet what makes this organism pathogenic it has a filamentous hemagglutinin with is this responsible for attachment of the organism to the respiratory tract epithelium and then it elaborates a toxin which causes adp ribosylation and the lymphocytosis then it also has an adenylate cyclase toxin or act and this is an, in, an important pathogenic you know, veterans factor it inhibits phagocytic activity of the organism then another toxin is tracheal cytotoxin which causes uh, damage to the ciliated epithelial cells which is the one responsible for the whooping in, in, in the calf whooping cup so because uh, the the sweeping capacity of the the cilia in the respiratory epithelial cells are lost no? So the patient is trying to cough out. So yun, ang cough is uh, explosive cough, whooping cough. So sige nga ubo, and it ends with a whoop. I used to, to, to demonstrate how, 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 how whooping cough is. Pero di rin nala yan, but mahalabog takos tiso. <laughs> Okay, so it's spectrum of the disease due to bordetella. So it can cause pertussis. That's the most common. That's why the name bordetella pertussis bordetella. So it's a paroxysmal pattern of a hacking cough, accompanied by production of copious amount of mucus that ends with an inspiratory whoop. Okay, so the first the incubation period it lasts for about two weeks so incubation means you you get the infection but do, you don't manifest the disease yet so the disease comes in three phases a cataral phase a paroxysmal phase and a convalescent phase so the cataral phase usually lasts where depending on the textbook <laughs> last night i read one to two weeks then and my usana said one week la uh, the, it starts with the cataral phase. So the cataral phase is uh, not specific. Para kalang masing ordinary yung ubo. Huh? The patient will have cough, running nose, slight fever, etc. And it is during this phase that is the most infectious. Patient are most infectious during this phase. Uh, first two weeks of the disease. And, uh, and then it will be followed by a paroxysmal phase or paroxysmal stage where the patient will go into a violent coughing, paroxysm, paroxysmal coughing that ends in a whoop. Mm -hmm. And this one lasts longer. Selling uh, a textbook two to four weeks. Uh, okay, if not treated. And then, uh, grabe. But uh, at this point, uh, the parents or the patient will have will seek 
ano, medical consult na ano, hindi rin na ini-ordinary. It's no longer an ordinary cough. Patient will be ano, magpakaihi, mag-inubo, sakit sa ulo. You will have, at, uh, some children will have ano, ano ito, hemorrhagic uh, ano ito, bleeding from the ano, from small blood vessels in the eyes. Then after that, uh, you will go if if, if, I sur if they survive, they will go to the convalescent phase. And uh, one of the you know is adverse you know, following a pertussis is the neurological complication. Sometimes the children during the paroxysmal stage, uh, paroxysmal coughing. <clears throat> so, especially in small children, they will go into convulsive seizure because of less oxygenation to the to the brain during the episode of paroxysmal coughing. So it's being treated with erythromycin. Then uh, prevention, it can be prevented. We have the acellular vaccine in combination with diphtheria and tetanus toxoid. The DPT, the very famous DPT, diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus vaccine given to children starting at two months old, two, four, six, and then you give two boosters later on. Ano ba? Ano ba? Ano ba ini? Pistol ba? Okay. So this is how it looks in uh, the Borget Gingo media. Uh, a characteristic description of the colonies, mercury drop colonies. So it takes up to 48 to 72 hours to see visible growth on the media. So in the, on a blood agar, it appears a small dome-shaped opaque viscid grayish white retractile glistening. So it's no malit no misfeeling of glistening. Colonies, parang mercury, sorry, parang mercury drop. So it resembles a bisected pearly or mercury drop. So, yun, laboratory diagnosis for, ano. Pero, now, this bit, maski waray, ano, maski waray laboratory. They just, if the, usually we see the patient during the paroxysmal phase. So, characteristic ito nga iya. Cough with and ends with a whoop, inspiratory whoop. So, specimen is a trot swab or sputum. Culture it into a boarded gingo or a charcoal medium. This is a boarded gingo. It's a blood agar. And then a charcoal agar. Then you can do serologic exam like agglutination, immunofluorescence, or ELISA. So the most sensitive method to make a diagnosis of pertussis is doing a PCR, polymerase chain reaction, and other nucleic acid amplification test. So for serology, you can detect IgA, IgG, IgM following exposure to pertussis. Uh, immunity is not lifelong following an infection with pertussis. So you can still have, you know, that's why in children we give uh, three doses at two months interval and after which two more booster doses later on. I want to tell you that. So the last one is Legionella, Pneumophila. Again, it's, it can cause respiratory tract infection. Pneumo. Mm -hmm. So it's a thin aerobic, pleomorphic, flagellated, non-sporing, gram-negative bacteria of the genus Legionella. It's a primary human pathogen. Ang pneumophila, 
and it's the causative agent of Legionnaire's disease, also known as Legionellosis. Okay. So, trivia lang, how, how the Legionnaire gets its, you know, the scientific beginning. Okay, so Legionnaire's disease acquired its name in July of 1976, so not so long ago. This is the year I graduated from medicine. When an outbreak of pneumonia occurred among people attending a convention of the American Legion at the Bellevue Stratford Hotel in Philadelphia. So on January 18, 1977, the causative agent was identified as a previously unknown strain of bacteria, and then it was subsequently named as Legionella. Kaya nagkasakit ang mga legionnaire, so attended that meeting. Okay. So this is the disease. Uh, I, I got this from my previous slide. We have a small family. So patient will have cough, shortness of breath, fever, muscle aches, headaches, sometimes diarrhea, nausea, and confusion. So the organism is, ano, is the bacteria, of course, naturally in fresh water, in the environment, like in lakes or streams, so present here. So it becomes a health concern when the bacteria grows and spread in human-made building water system, like in itong mga tanki. In the house, you have tanki nga, wala limpyo-limpyo. So it water coming out from the tank, from the reservoir, to your faucet, you know. And then uh, what happens is, I'm oh, sorry, but battery tire. Wait, wait, my lecture pa ako. Do not disturb. So it, it can cause a serious type of pneumonia uh, due to breathing in of a small droplets of the water that contains the or Legionella bacteria. So this is how you get it. Uh, so the most likely sources of infection will be the following, the shower heads, your hot tubs, the air conditioning system, the plumbing system, and the decorative fountains. Okay. So the organism is uh, poorly gram-negative rods and we can be visualized using a silver stain okay. so you did not, you we do not rely much, much on doing the gram stain it's an intracellular facultative bacteria and they can be cultured on a charcoal yeast extract agar with uh, incorporated on it is an increased amount of iron and cysteine so uh, transmission, habitat and transmission, environmental water sources, as shown in the picture, it, uh, it's a source of the organism and it can replicate intracellularly. So CMI or cell mediated immunity is important. And what happens is uh, it inhibits a phagol phagolysosome fusion. <laughs> Uh, predisposing factor to legionellosis is are the following: smoking, old age, high alcohol intake, and immunosuppression. So, a spectrum of the disease it can cause a typical pneumonia. Uh, the term "atypical" will come across this. Other organism can also cause a typical pneumonia. Uh, like example, for example, mycoplasma can cause a typical pneumonia. Uh, Tapara, we have uh, pneumocystis yerovitsi, used to be known as pneumocystis cariniae. 
can also cause atypical pneumonia. So it's not only, atypical pneumonia is not only due to the Junella, pneumophila. So the pneumonia is accompanied by confusion and non-bloody diarrhea, hyponatremia, proteinuria, and hematuria. Then it can also cause uh, Pontiac fever. Pontiac is a place in the U.S. where in, they have an outbreak causing a mild flu-like illness and they found out the organism was Legionella. So the treatment of choice is giving azithromycin or an erythromycin. Okay. So this this is uh, the charcoal and uh, yeast extract agar. So it can cause uh, parang flu-like syndrome, but it's a severe. Uh, patient will have uh, fever, chill, loss of appetite, headache, lethargy. Okay. So it can cause a potentially fatal form of pneumonia. And uh, it cannot be transmitted from person to person. So you get it from the sources, diba? So from air conditioning unit, from water tanks, from showers, from tubs. Okay. So this is the urea antigen test for you know, for Legionella. This is the most commonly used laboratory test for diagnosis. It's the detect detection of urinary antigen. Uh, which detect a part of the Legionella bacteria in the urine of patient. If the patient has pneumonia and the test is positive, then the patient is considered to have Legionnaire's disease. Okay. Okay, that, that ends the lecture. Okay, so do you have questions? Aside from the lecture, because after this, you you will have the quiz uh, with uh, Miss Dalia. So I hope everybody is present at this time. Uh, last time you had a quiz with Doc Polidario, and you had the quiz before the lecture. So I I, I told him that we will not give a quiz before the lecture. Why? Because I do not want students to have reasons. Yeah. Uh, because they came in late, so yun, na late sila. So when they came in, kalahati na almost finished na ang, ang quiz. So that's why the quiz are always given after a lecture. Uh, and the reason naman ni Doc Polidario is uh, because the student now will not be listening to the lecture. Instead, they will be studying for the, the, the quiz. But I told you as an advice, do not do uh, no, do not take it for the if you're having lecture, listen to the lecture because uh, there are things that uh, if you just have the PowerPoint, okay, but you do not you do not know where the lecturer put his or her focus on. Oh, like for this morning, we have five big topics oh, and I'm only going to make 20 questions for this. Oh, what if I just focus on Nigeria and you were still not around? You were reading, uh, but you're supposed to be having a quiz or siguro mag budget, material budgetosis. You missed out something, di ba? Uh -oh. Umaga, nalugi ka, kanuha. I tell you. So when it's lecture time, you listen. And then after that, a quiz. Because we expect you to come to class, to attend, going to be in the class is that you have already prepared for the quiz this morning. So do not try to, and usual practice ng student during the face-to-face -face is absent. Absent in the lecture, and then they will just attend the quiz. So what we did before, from face-to-face, -face, we had the quiz first. So yung malilit, ah, wala ka ng quiz. Uh -uh. My lecture ka na lang. And when, during the face-to-face, -face, uh, I had that policy that when I'm already in the classroom do, starting the lecture, I will not allow you to enter the room. 
I will close the door. Mm -hmm. So after this, if you have no, no questions, you want to have a little more minutes before Miss Dahlia comes in. It's all right with me. But if you have some questions, uh, I know, you can ask now or, or reserve that for November 10. We will meet again on November 10. That's the last lecture before the bi monthly. So, November 10, ma quiz pa kita. The lecture this morning, amo takiki quiz on November 10. Okay? So, what are you? Queenie? Are you, where are you? Yeah, no. Okay, now what I know, I, I, I will, I know, I will end now. And then, uh, informal na, oh, hey, Miss Dalia, we're done. So, if what I come with question, I okay, thank you for your time. Good luck on your exam. I hope, I know, pag, ano ka mo, kay, as I said, at the start of this morning's session, Makuri pagbawi sa micro for semester subjects. Why? Because you only have till January, end of January. But February exams na kita. Hmm. So, make good. Kay, what I did, what I niko, and I remember at Southwestern, namung bumagsak, then then as, ma'am, mag ano ta, uh, ang tawag tong exam, removal ba yun? Remedial. A removal, remedial, removal, ganun. No, I mean, when I was still new, I was very, and, oh, compliant ako, sige, remedial, pausa, kaduha. Pagkatulo na, ako, sir, no more. Sana, ako, I cannot, I cannot, ex, ex, ano, extend my arm anymore. So, parang na-lesson ko na, ako, giving the same, same, same question, this, uh, the lang, this, uh, this arranged, I'm getting the score getting lower. Na ko, eh, wala na ito pag asa, sir. Pagsak mo na lang yan. Pagkatulo na, the dean was insistent. I said, if you want to give, ikaw na lang, sir. I don't want. From there on, I did not give remedial na. I no. That means, ano, they were not interested in passing my cross, so let them just repeat. Anyway, it's offered every per semester. Okay, for I now, Christian, I might sign off now. So, thank you for your time. Good luck again. Doc, I have a question, though, but it's not related with the lecture this morning. Um, I'm going ask. I mean, ask po kasi if we can have a list of the 17 students na no entry for Dr. Esquivel's quiz. So Name? They will also know. Yes, po, and 17 students. Oh, ito, uh, Alcuber, Apita, Alcuber, Apita, Artuge, Borja, 